Hello, friends, and welcome back. This is Jenna from McGuire, and I have another episode of My Favorite Crafty Things for 2019. Today is all about stencils. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what I think are some of the best, best stencils from the year, along with a couple products that work really well with stencils. I encourage you to check out my blog post that I linked to below. In that blog post, I have exclusive discount codes, giveaways, and much more information. So I'm hoping that this is helpful to you. I don't work for any of these companies. These are just products I like, and I'm hoping that you'll find something that inspires you. Okay, now first I wanted to mention before we get into stencils, one product that I find very helpful when using stencils, and that is the ThermaWeb Pixie Spray. This is a low tack repositionable adhesive that you spray on the back of your stencil so that it holds onto the paper as you ink. So what I do is I put my stencil in a box, I spray the adhesive from about a foot above. You just put a light layer on, I actually put too much on this one, you really don't need that much. But then you give it a few minutes to dry. That's the key, you wanna give it a couple minutes to dry, then put it on your paper to do the inking. So I sprayed a bunch of these at once and I usually do this outside in the box. Then I just let them sit for a couple minutes and I can do all the inking that I want to do. If you want to, you can wash off the stencil afterwards with warm soap and water. Okay, so now I'm going to start showing you the stencils that now that I've showed you the pixie spray, I did spray the pixie spray on the back of all the stencils that I show today. Now this is the Altenew Bubble Wrap Stencil. I like the large dots on this. I think it's a great one for fun, colorful backgrounds or you can do a subtle background by doing maybe white embossing paste on a white cardstock. For each of the stencils I'm showing today, I'll do some inking or put some sort of gel or paste over it just so you can see what it looks like in action. Here I put down three different colors of Distress Oxide ink, being sure to overlap to create this rainbow background. I used picked raspberry, mustard seed, and peacock feather. When I remove the stencil, check out that beautiful rainbow colorful look that I get with that dot stencil. I also like that the openings are so large that you could stamp over the stencil. Okay, the next stencil I recommend is the Gina K Designs Sunspot Stencil. This is definitely a favorite of mine from this year because I like the focal point that it creates in the center of a card. Here I put down two colors of Distress Oxide ink and watch, you can actually build this on top of each other. So I can put the stencil back down. Remember, it still has that stick on the back. And I'm just going to move it around a little bit to create an overlap look. So I just rotated it a bit, stick it back down on my paper, wipe off the excess ink. And this time I'm applying a lighter color. This is Tumbled Glass Distress Oxide Ink. So we're going to create an overlap look here. This stencil is perfect for this. This is a great way to get more looks out of any stencil that you may have. By the way, I've done a video using this stencil along with a Gina K wreath builder template. And that's how I got the fun pattern that you see here. And I'll link to this video if you'd like to check it out. I also think it would be fun to use that stencil and mask off lines of dots and do like a rainbow going around. The next stencil that I recommend is from the Rabbit Hole Designs and it's called Diamond Flower. It's just a classic pattern that I think would work with different styles of cards. This time I have a little blending sponge and I'm applying Tonic Nouveau Mousse over this. I chose a light color for a softer look, but there are more bold colors. This just creates a really pearly shine very quickly over a stencil. And there you can see how it catches the light nicely. And by the way, the different products I apply over the stencils can be used with any stencils. I just wanted to show you different looks. Next we have from Sugar Pea Designs, the Geo Snowflake Stencil. Now it's got the name Snowflake in its title, but by all means this could be used all year round. This time I put down some Gina K Glitter Glitz in silver, so beautiful. And I'm using a stencil pal, that's that long white tool, to easily spread this across the whole stencil. It's a great way to get a smooth, even layer. I highly recommend that tool and check out how beautiful this stencil is with that silver glitter glitz. Once I'm done, I can put the excess that's on my white stencil pal back into the jar, and then I just quickly clean my stencil off with warm soapy water. I really like the results that I get using the glitter glitz products. There are many different colors, so I encourage you to check them out. Silver is definitely a must have. 
Another stencil that I really like this year is from Hefe Doodle. This is a great stencil because it has a playful, simple pattern and it's in a circle. So once again, you can create a nice focal point in the center of a card. I'm just quickly applying some Distress Oxide ink over the stencil. I really like how easy it is to put these inks with stencils. And check out that simple pattern. If I wanted to, I could rotate the stencil a bit and do another layer, but I like it as is. And I like that you can build these stencils up to create new patterns. I think this stencil would be lovely in a white pigment ink over a colored cardstock. Here we have the Kindred Stamps Country Quilt Stencil. I like that this is a simple design, something that wouldn't be too overwhelming to have as a background. So I'm just putting it over light gray cardstock and applying some bright blue glitter glitz. You can see how easy this is to spread around using that stencil pal. Now if I wanted to, I could do this one layer, take off the stencil, let it dry, then put the stencil back down but offset a bit and do another color. And then you could build up this fun plaid background. I really like the style of this. You could even put gems wherever those lines intersect. Here we have the Studio Katia Autumn Leaves Stencil. I really like the playful look of this and that you can ink it onto cardstock and then add little, uh, little flower stamped images or little flower sequins to the pattern. So you could actually make this the focal point of your card if you wanted to. I also think it would be beautiful with a white glitter product over the stencil on a white cardstock background just for added shine and texture. One of the most beautiful and popular stencils of 2019 is the Simonsa Stamp Tumbling Leaves Stencil. This is excellent for so many fun techniques. You can do multiple colors of ink, you can do offset stenciling, anything that you want. And what's nice is that this can be used in many different orientations, creating a focal point in different spots on your card. I'll be using this in a video soon, along with fun embossing powders. Next up is the Create a Smile Fern Stencil. This is a unique stencil in that you can use it as a background, or you can mask off different ferns and place the individual images anywhere you want on a card. There are many different sizes included, and I think it's a great backdrop for any floral stamped images or die cuts. An unusual stencil that I think is very clever is the Picket Fence Ring of Flowers Stencil. There is this floral ring and then the solid piece that goes in the center. This allows you to ink and mask different types of patterns on your background. Here I'm just doing a couple colors showing that you can mask off the center of the circle and just do the ring if you wanted. You can overlap colors. You can do all kinds of different techniques with this. I also think that this ring stencil would be great for creating an impression on cardstock. You can actually impress your cardstock with stencils using an embossing mat. And I'll link to a video that shows that technique here. It would be great for this particular stencil. Next up is the Altenew Diamond Builder Stencil. This is a really cool stencil in that it builds a creative looking three-dimensional background. You ink it up once as I did here, clean off your stencil, then you flip it over and line up the pattern again and use a different color. So here I'm going to flip it over, line up the pattern, and I'm going to use a different color ink this time. And you'll see a pattern starting to form. After I've covered that, I can wipe off the excess ink. Then I can rotate the stencil and add a third color. So uh, Altenew has a few different stencils like this that as you build up the layers, you create a three-dimensional looking pattern, all with one stencil. Okay, so here is the fourth layer. I'm going to use a super soft uh, sh uh, sponge sugar ink with this last layer and check out the final results. It gives this faux dimensional look that is super cool. Now I did bright colors. You could definitely do something more subtle if you want, but this would be the focal point of a card. So you can create a quick card very easily using the one stencil. Another type of stencil that's very popular this year is layering stencils, where you can get a set of stencils that work together to create a background. These are from Tailored Expressions, and I think it's meant to create kind of a holiday layered background, but I think you could use it all year. So I did the first stencil, then I have the second stencil, and you can line them up easily by lining up the holes on the side of the stencil. See how they uh, have the little holes there that you can line up? It helps you to figure out how to line up each of the layers. And I'll show you that with the next layer. So here I'm putting down the second layer. You can see how easy it is to layer up. And I'm going to apply a darker green ink this time. 
The third stencil is a berry stencil. So I'm going to line that up on the back of the stencil that we just did, lining up those holes. Then I'm lining up through the stencils onto my inked background, removing the top one, and now we can apply whatever we want over the berry stencil. So I'm going to use some pink Nouveau Glimmer Paste here. You could use lighter colors for a springtime card. You could use red for a holiday card. You could add little stamped flowers on the background if you wanted to. I just really think this is one of those stencils that can be used all year, and I love the layered look. You could have even done more leaves on a background, maybe lighter the second time, just rotate the stencils and build up a really colorful background. Another layering stencil set that I like is the Trinity Stamps Catching Some Rays. There are two stencils in the set. Now I'm not going to ink up the whole stencil, just towards the middle with some Distress Oxide in Mustard Seed. And you can see the beautiful sun ray background that you get. I think this would be great even in different colors to create kind of a focal point on a card, but it's definitely fun for a sun. Now here's the second stencil. This time I'm using Carved Pumpkin and applying ink over that. And check out the layered sunshine that you get. So you could definitely use these stencils together or separately. Now here's a card that I did where I used one of the stencils to kind of add a little bit of warmth to the sunshine that I created with Concord and Ninth products. And I'll link to this video if you want to check it out. So I didn't ink up the whole stencil, just softly from the middle. A really creative layered stencil set from this year is from Trinity Stamps. It's the Layered Fireworks. So there are two stencils that layer together to create some fun firework patterns. And what's neat is that on one stencil, they've engraved the pattern of the other stencil, which allows you to line them up very easily. So let's do this one firework pattern over here in the corner. I applied the pink ink over one stencil. Now I can take the other stencil, line up the pattern that's engraved on the stencil with what I've inked, apply another color of ink, and check out the fun firework pattern that we get. You could actually use these for flowers or a focal point behind a stamped image if you want. Super fun for a celebration card or birthday card. It would be really fun to do this with some of the Glitter Glitz products that I showed you earlier for some shine and texture. Another layered stencil set that I really like is from Birch Press, and this has a great price point because it's smaller. So there are three circle dies that you can layer together in many different ways. Now I'm just quickly applying ink over these, but you could use different products to create texture if you want. And there are many different ways you can layer them together to create different looks. You could also, after inking up all of the layers, embellish this with gemstones or pearls to create some dimension. So here you can see what you get just by doing three simple inked layers over the stencils. I'm crazy about these different patterns. And by the way, if you do have layering dies from like Birch Press, you can actually cut them from cardstock and create stencils yourself and do a similar pattern. But these stencils are inexpensive and a great way to get that inked layered look. Next is the Simon Hurley Shell Maker Stencil. This works a lot like a layering stamp set. You first ink up the solid most layer. Then you shift the stencil and ink up the layer that goes on top of that. Super easy to do. You just use a lighter color and a darker color. Here are some examples that Simon created that he said I could share with you. And you can see the beautiful realistic uh, shells that you can create using the stencil. I'm hoping that in the new year there are more stencils like this because it's a very inexpensive option for creating a realistic look. Another stencil that's great for layering is the new Paper Smooches Flower Building Stencil. I did one example here on cardstock, so fast to create, and I like that you can blend different colors together to make it look more realistic. All you need to do is use some tape to mask off different parts of the stencil so you can ink up only the parts you want. And you can create a fun floral cluster using this, there's even a butterfly. Again, this is a very inexpensive option for creating a layered look. The rest of the stencils that I recommend are more like tools or templates, but I think it's important to include here. These are inexpensive tools that can really make a big difference in your card making. First up is a product that's been out for a while, but it's newer to me, and it's the Brutus Monroe Simple Blend Stencils. There are many templates like this that are card size with different shape openings. And the set actually includes the opening shapes too, so you have the positive and the negative. There are circles, squares, ovals, florals, even this card shape, which I think is super fun. 
All you have to do is tape one of these onto your card or temporarily adhere it. And then you can ink over it and stamp over it and even add another stencil over it to create unique shaped backgrounds. So let me show you with a square option here. This is just a quick example, but think of all the great things that you can do with this. So I'm just taping this temporarily onto a piece of white cardstock and you can see that square opening. It's perfectly positioned and centered and ready to go. I'm applying a light amount of Distress Oxide ink. Then I'm going to take a stencil and put that over it and apply a darker color of Distress Oxide ink. You could stamp over this opening, you can ink over it, you can spray over it, anything you want. And then when we remove these stencils, we end up with this perfect square of that pattern. So if you're someone who struggles with using large backgrounds or you prefer simple designs, this might be a good option for you. There are many different shapes available through Brutus Monroe. I personally like the floral shape and that envelope that I showed you earlier, but they have the basic shapes also if you're interested. Another newer template option is the Tailored Expressions Masking Stencils. I believe these come two stencils in a pack, so these two rectangle ones come together. And of course you have the negative and the positive spaces. Now these stencils are six by six, but they have little engraved lines that you can line up with your smaller pieces of cardstock. So I have four and a quarter by five and a half here, and I don't have to worry about lining it up because I can just follow those guidelines. So I'm going to tape my cardstock onto the back of the stencil, and then I can ink anything I want over that opening. So this is a rectangle opening. But why I like to use these is to help me center things when I put cards together. If you have a hard time getting things centered in the center of your card, like say a small circle, by putting this template over it and following those guidelines, you make a smaller area in which you need to kind of do your centering. So I can center this circle between that smaller opening, then I can remove the stencil and then I know it's centered. It's a great way to save time over measuring things out. There are also the square templates like the one you see here. And these of course have that engraved outline that allows you to line up typical card sizes. So I think the outlines are four and a quarter by five and a half and four by five and a quarter. So there you can see how easy it would be to line something up in the center top of your card by putting this template down first. Or as I showed with the last example, you can ink over the openings, do other stenciling, anything you want. And then of course there are the circle options. So there's a small circle and a large circle template included in this set. So these are different options for creating a layered stencil look, or you can use them as tools to help you center things in your card, which I'll be showing in a video soon. And last but definitely not least is the Gina K Designs Mega Wreath Builder Templates. Now last year on my favorites list, I included the original wreath builder template. And I'll link to that video here if you want to check it out. But these templates allow you to stamp an image repeatedly in a perfect circle, forming a wreath or a background. The larger templates that you see here are from the Mega Wreath Builder. This one in my hands is the original one that I recommended last year and I still think is an excellent tool to have in your craft room. These larger Mega Wreath Builder templates work with the larger stamping tool, such as the Misty Memory Stamping Tool. However, I have a video coming out soon that shows you how to use these if you don't have the larger stamping tool. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to use these here because it'll make this video too long and because Gina Kay, who invented this, has an excellent video showing you exactly how to use it. Here are some of the projects that she created. These are all larger projects that are framed in her craft room. So this is for creating something that you can put on your wall or to make a larger card. The original wreath builder works for smaller patterns. They're fun to use together and separately and I highly recommend checking out her video. I think you'll be inspired and see why I recommend it. I'll link to her video up here on the top right and in my description below, but stay tuned. I will have a video showing creative ways to use that mega wreath builder template. Okay, there you have my favorite stencils from this year. If you are interested in any of them, I do link below in my YouTube description and I have a lot of information, including those exclusive discount codes and giveaways over on my blog. If you haven't done so, you can check out the other videos that I've uh, done for my favorite crafty things so far, and there'll be more coming soon.
Thanks for spending this time with me. I always appreciate it, and I hope you have a wonderful week.